Hey dudes, and welcome back to The Bants. As always, I am your host, The Bants. And here we are once again on another Monday, which means it is time for our first What's Happening in Fashion for the week, so let's just get right into it. And first up, of course, we have our art stories for the day. And starting us off, High Fructo sat down for a nice little interview with Okuda San Miguel, talking just a little bit about some of his art, as well as showing off some of his pieces as well. And if you are a fan of just super vibrant and colorful art mixed in with some geometric shapes and patterns I highly recommend checking this out then Kit Bennett showed up some photos of his parking lot murals and these are just insane not for just their attention to detail but also just for their sheer size as well so if you are a fan of much larger paintings especially in such a creative format as this I highly recommend giving these a look and lastly Nahoko Kojima showed off some of her newest sculptures and these just blew me away not only for their creativity and detail, but also because every single sculpture here was hand cut out of paper that she cut herself. So if that sounds interesting to you, and really it definitely is, I highly recommend checking this out as well. Okay, and now moving into our fashion section for the day. First up, let's take a quick look at the newest collaboration between brand Mango and artist Mr. Andre. Now, first off, let me be a little bit upfront about something here. As far as this collection goes, I'm actually really not the biggest fan, mainly just because there's really not a lot of apparel pieces here. And on that note, I'm actually not a huge fan of the brand Mango either, mainly for two reasons. One, because I really just don't know a lot about the brand, and I don't really feel like knowing much more about the brand. And two, from what I've seen with this brand, they don't really seem to be much better than your average fast fashion company anyway. So I'm sure you're all wondering if this is in fact the case, why even talk about this collection in the first place? Well, that's easy. I'm only talking about this collection purely and simply because I am a huge fan of Mr. Andre. Because if you couldn't already tell, yeah, I kind of enjoy this style of art. And kind of going off topic for a quick second, I think out of all the artists that really surprised me by not having their own fashion brands over the years, that I think could actually do immensely well with having a fashion brand, I think that probably Mr. Andre would be at the top of my list. Yes, I understand that he's been busy over the years aside from art running hotels and restaurants and clubs and things like that, but if he really wanted to, he could easily have just as successful as a artist-based fashion brand as Para, in my opinion. And that isn't to say he hasn't worked with fashion companies in the past, in fact he's had a better of different collaborations before from everybody from Louis Vuitton to Levi's to Nike and even Uniqlo but unfortunately for the most part these collaborations just happen to be very few and far in between and aside from a couple of the lower end ones they tend to also be very much on the expensive side for the most part so getting a chance to see another collaboration from him here that's much more on the decently priced side especially if you're a fan of his work or art in general is just overall really nice to see. As I said before, there really isn't a lot of apparel here. Yes, there are some tees and some sweatshirts and even a couple sweaters, which is nice. But what's really surprising to me even more so than that is just the amount of different patches and pins that are available in this collection. So if you're a fan of that sort of thing, highly recommend giving this a look. And seeing as how the most expensive thing in this collection is only 50 USD, whether you're a fan of graffiti art or even more specifically Mr. A, either way, highly recommend checking out this collection. Then up next, Japanese brand Doublet showed off their Spring Summer 2019 collection. And let me tell you, this is just so, so bad. And let me remind you all, this is the company that won the LVMH prize this year, the prize that the conglomerate gives out to new and young fashion designers that they see as having potential in future years. So I'm sure now with that knowledge, you'd probably expect nothing less than remarkable out of them for their next collection. And boy, did they deliver here with such brilliant pieces as this 
your design here graphic tee and matching hat. And don't worry, this graphic tee will only set you back $325 no big deal. But all jokes aside, please tell me what exactly in this collection here hasn't already been done countless times before, or even more so isn't already just playing to an already played out style. All I'm personally seeing here is more lazy graphic tees and oversized silhouettes and tropical pattern printed shirts and overpriced tracksuits. And for fuck's sake, they are biting other people's and companies' ideas so hard that they literally, and I mean literally, stole the Lacoste logo for some of their pieces. And believe me, I checked multiple sources to confirm this, and I couldn't find anything. I checked their site, I checked with a bunch of their different stockists, and nobody is saying that by any means this is a Lacoste collab. No, they just really took the Crocodile logo, said fuck it, and slapped it on a really shitty $390 polo and obviously terribly distressed $640 cardigan. Like, whether or not you even enjoy Lacoste, in what fucking world is this okay? So all I really have left to say is just what a fucking terrible collection, and even more disappointing than that is just what a fucking waste of an LVMH prize. But let's not end this video on such a sour note, shall we? Last up, let's take a look at the Fall Winter 2018 lookbook from brand Professor E, because this collection here is just absolutely incredible. And first up, of course, let me bring you a little bit up to speed on the brand. Professor E is a Taiwan-based artisanal brand that has only been around for two years now. And I was completely blown away by the brand after learning about them earlier this year after seeing their Spring Summer 2018 lookbook. Well, here they are back once again with an even stronger collection and showing than last time. What we're seeing here is some beautifully crafted and even some handcrafted pieces with an emphasis on patchwork and unhemmed seams and even some very interesting fabrics to go along with them. All of which comes together in an undercover meets the soloist meets contemporary fashion kind of way. And it's just gorgeous. And I'm not even talking about these pieces individually or by themselves, but especially when layered the way they are styled in this lookbook here, making for some just absolutely tremendous fits. And the fact that the majority of the pieces here, just excluding a handful of the outerwear pieces, all come in at under $300, yes, that means that even some of the handcrafted pieces here are under $300 only just furthers the appeal. So really, what an absolutely fantastic first two years out of this brand. And if you hadn't heard of Professor E up until this point, definitely go check them out, even if it's not your style. Just from a design aspect, these pieces are just wonderful. And I really can't wait to see exactly where the brand evolves to next. And finally, let's take a look at our articles for the day. And first up, Grail put out another very in-depth history of the brand Helly Hansen. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about how they helped evolve athletic and active wear up into where it is now, I'd give this a read. Then The Guardian got a very exclusive interview with a legendary fashion designer Ray Kawakubo, obviously of Home de Garçon fame. So if you're interested in hearing what she has to say, which I highly recommend you do, I'd check this out. And lastly, Days Digital did a very interesting article on what it's like to go to your first fashion week as that's exactly what the author did here. So if you're interested or have always been interested in what going to a fashion week is like, then definitely give this a look as well. Alright, and with that, we've reached the end of our first What's Happening in Fashion for the Week. I hope you guys have enjoyed. And if you want to read any of the articles I talked about today or check out some lookbook photos I wasn't able to include in this video. Of course, I've linked everything in the description down below. And thank you guys all once again for watching my videos and supporting my content. And as always, until next time.